Okay, hey everybody. So it looks like we've got a small group today, which is fine. I had, um, and by the way, let me know in the comments if I think the audio is working this time, but if it's not, and my mouth is just moving, let me know. Um, so I'm, I'm doing this live because I thought it would be good to have some uh, Q&A in here. And also I think we need to um, decide a course of action for doing some Octane content in the future, um, among some other things. And yeah, I'm just gonna kind of wing it and go through the basics. I think it would be good to have just a sort of an Octane Primer video for people new to Octane now that Octane Prime is included in Moto from 17 forward. And uh, there's gonna be some changes to integrate it, but those are gonna take some uh, time, probably a lot of time. So uh, hopefully this video will be useful over the coming months to people who are first getting into Octane. Everything is fine, audio is fantastic. Um, so I think the first thing I'm going to do, well, actually, let me just talk about the dis Discord really quickly. So let me um, jump over here and let me just pop up the Discord. So uh, a lot of you are probably already on this that are that are watching, but if this is you know if you're if you're new to Moto or um, aren't on the Pixel Fondue Discord yet, I'm just going to go over it real quick because there's a lot of Octane content here. So we have just some basic channels like 3D General Moto Octane Plasticity. We also have a new coding channel. So if you're a coder, also if you're interested in, in coding OSL shaders for Octane, I would love to get some of that stuff going on here as well. Uh, but these are just general chat channels like Slack. What kind of sets this um, apart is, you know, we've, we've got a gallery on here, which is pretty, um, pretty active actually. But what's really good is we have these channels down here, quick tips, questions, um, training, and media, and content. So quick tips are like, uh, these are all Williams quick tips and, and Moto and Octane and Plasticity, but they're all searchable via tags. They're just they're just easier to find here than they are using the YouTube algorithm. So it's a great place to find, this, you know, I think he's got maybe 3,000 altogether with all these programs. Um, maybe we'll add his Houdini and, and, and Clo and some of the other ones on here as well. Um, this is sort of like a FAQ, it's sort of like a forum, the Octane questions, Moto questions. So, you know, if you look at this, how to get started at Octane, this is, this is a pretty long thread here. And they're just threads like a forum. So you have the advantages of a forum as well as sort of the streaming chat of Slack. Um, Octane training, again, we've got all this training here as well. And we'll put training from any source here. It's not just Pixel Fondue training. So a lot of these are from Silverwing. He's a Cinema 4D person, but he's, Awesome. I think he's really the best Octane uh, YouTuber out there. And and the Cinema 4D nodes and that you know they're just Octane nodes. So they match up with the ones in Moto. You can do a you can watch a Cinema 4D Octane tutorial and recreate it in Moto really easily. It's really easy to follow, even for beginners, I think. Um, we also have Octane content. So this one is is actually pretty important because here you can actually share scenes. So typically when I do a tutorial, I'll put the scene up as well, the moto scene, sometimes the octane scene, and there's some scripts and, and whoops and some other stuff in there as well. And some of these scenes uh, will have, you know, like a lot of, um, you know, like this one is like a volumetric white and this one is layered materials and this one is uh, composite texturing. These are all scenes in moto, fur scenes, hair scenes. I think I've got one here with every single um, uh, octane, um, procedural texture on these spheres. You could just kind of run through the shader tree and, and get a visual representation of every single octane procedural texture just at a, at a glance. So super useful and, you know, Boolean. So anyway, stop by the forum if you, or not the forum, the, uh, the Discord if you can. There's also some, you know, community stuff up here. Like I believe you can watch these things as these events like YouTube channels and talk amongst yourselves via voice and things like that. So we'll, we'll, do some more direct streaming to Discord later and, and figure some of this stuff out. But I just, right now, I just don't want to screw up the stream. So I'm just, just doing YouTube. But anyway, that's the Discord. And let's go into Moto. But really quickly, let me, just a little bit about myself and Octane. So I've used Octane for um, years. Like, uh, see, can anyone add to the page? Yes, you can add to the uh, Discord content, um, Octane content, Moto content, plasticity content. I think maybe a couple of them, like quick tips are locked off. So just William can add those or me. Uh, but in general, I think anybody can add. We want people to add content. So if you can't add content, let me know and, or Arnie know and we'll get, a, get it going. Um, because the, the thing that's going to set this Discord apart is content. And that's why we have 
there's new people coming to the Discord every day. So we, we blew over past 1,000 people. By the end of the year, we'll be over 2,000 people, I'm sure. And we're listed officially now. So the Discord's doing really well. And I really think that's that's going to be the place, you know, five years from now, all this stuff, Discord is where you're going to be looking at training and getting content and chatting and all that stuff. So uh, anyway, so yeah, this is this is Sabretooth Productions. This is just my production company. This is what I actually do all day. But all this content on here, this is all Octane. I've been using Octane for many years. Like I think I, I started using Octane before Otoy even acquired Octane. Um, so a lot of, um, just a lot of experience in Octane. These are all animations done in Octane. I think every single one of these animations was rendered on the Octane render farm, the render network, which we'll talk about a little bit as well. So, um, yeah, just a ton of Octane stuff, right? Although I think this one was V-Ray actually. So, <laughs> but anyway, that's, that's enough about the discord and Octane. Let's just kind of like get into it here. I'll kind of try to keep an eye on the, um, Keep an eye on the uh, on the chat there. But so the first thing I want to know, this is 1704 and it does come. So this is the first version of Moto that comes shipping with Octane Prime. First of all, if you already own Octane, just go over here to your system and kits and disable Octane Prime. And so you can use your commercial version of Octane, which has a couple of advantages over Prime. I think you can use multiple GPUs, but you know, nowadays, I'm not sure a lot of people even do that. Like, I have a 4090 in my system. I, I, I can't imagine shoving two of those things in there, like the power supply you would need. So I, I don't think there's a huge amount of um, advantage to com commercial Octane necessarily for at least the casual user. But if you have it, um, you'll get some errors. So you want to go in here and disable Octane Prime and then quit Moto and restart Moto and you should be golden. Um, now we do have an Octane uh, UI. Now keep in mind, like Octane was licensed kind of at the last minute. They got it in just under the hour before Moto 17 shipped. And I, I think Greg Brown made the right decision shipping it with Octane, even though they basically had no training material for it. And I think Laura maybe threw this um, uh, layout together really quickly. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to make your own layout. Because um, like I said, like I think she had a like a day probably to put this together, but it's really kind of lacking. I think it, you can't get, there's no way to get to your presets here. There's no way to get to the images panel. Um, I never really liked all these different uh, layouts myself. I work entirely from Moto layout. I know William does as well. So we're just gonna quickly create, a, I think a better Octane layout and then, then we'll start working in Octane directly. So, up here, what we can do is I'm just going to pop open another screen on this side and I'm going to collapse this panel. And then this little plus here, I can add a new, um, I can add a new uh, viewport up here. And you can see I already have the Octane icon. That's because it's already in my config, but I'll show you how to get the Octane icon up there. But basically we've got a new port and it's just blank to begin with, right? And we're going to do the same thing over here because we'll just go over here and say expanded and we've got a blank one right here. And so we're gonna fill these up with Octane stuff. So the first thing to do is just sort of split this one. You see this little tiny dot here? It might be hard to see in the live stream, but if you hold control and you swipe down, it'll split the viewport. So I'm just gonna do that twice. So there's three viewports here. And this top viewport, I'm going to make the main Octane uh, viewport. So under um, card view here, it says Octane render viewport. You can just pop that in and there's our Octane viewport. This one, we're gonna make a form view and put our Octane toolbar there. So just under, application this may be popping off the screen a little bit but just find form view right here and then if you click on the little um, gear icon right here you can you can find your form and so you can even type in a search term at the top like octane so I won't do that because it goes off the screen but you can just find um, the octane form here we want whoops go down here so we want um, Octane Viewport Toolbar right there. So we've got the Octane Viewport Toolbar here. Now I also wanna probably do minimum headers. So if you just, again, click the tiny, tiny little dot here and go to Viewport Controls and click Min Head, you'll get rid of that header up there. Same with this one, go to the tiny, tiny, tiny little thing there, Viewport Controls, Min Head, and it'll get rid of that. And then this one, you're probably, now, now this little button's even smaller, it's like a pixel you'll probably want to do under viewport controls, you'll also see one called lock um, height. It's just off the screen, but it's right there. You want to lock the height, so it'll lock the height of this one. Actually, you don't want to do that. Well, it's really hugely expanded. Let me just undo that real quick. Turn off lock height. 
get it kind of small. We'll walk that in a second. And this bottom one is where we get the status feedback, right? So in this one, we want this viewport to be um, status feedback. So I think under application, you'll see status feedback. Again, that's just kind of right off the screen, but status feedback. And then you click the gear icon and you can do, I think it is Octane, uh, Octane Render for Moto, this one right here, that's the status feedback. And we will minimum min viewport this one as well, min header, and then we just gotta squoosh this down. And now I've got um, Octane set up over here. Now I just need Octane properties over here. So I, I want two viewports here. So I'm just gonna slash that down. And over here, I'm gonna do um, a form view in both of them. So again, application, form view, click the little form icon, say click the exports. You can just type in um, Octane in the um, search. Let me actually, it just goes off the capture screen. So I'll just click here. Normally you type in Octane search, but it'll kind of sh shoot off the screen. So let me just scroll down here to see if I can find it manually. We want the Octane, um, whoops. Octane, Octane schematic left panel. Whoops, that's the one we want on the top actually. This one we want Octane schematic left panel and the bottom one we want the tool settings. So let me just change that real quick. We want Octane uh, node properties on that one. And this one is gonna be, um, again, a application form view. And I'm sorry, this is kind of boring if you've already done this, but for people first um, first using um, Octane and, and Moto, unless they incorporate this into the main layout, I think this is the best way to work. So it's worth doing this. So let's just do the, uh, again, this is called, this one is gonna be called Octane uh, Schematic Toolbar, I believe, Octane, uh, schematic toolbar and oh, not schematic toolbar um, viewport toolbar there no schematic toolbar schematic toolbar left panel there we go okay so now we got all our octane nodes and we've got our octane tool properties and if I go in here and make a cube we'll get it through the camera I do want to make a note so when octane um, in fact let's make this um, I'm just going to subdivide this a couple of times and when octane first starts rendering it needs an open gl viewport open to grab the shading information so when i hit uh render here and it's going to load up everything into the viewport and start rendering there's my my cube here um and you can see this is our status viewport here so we got let me just go scooch this down a little bit this is where we've got a number of passes our number of samples things like that actually really useful we can scoot down our toolbar and just sort of scooch everything over. It's kind of hard working in a 1920 by 1080 space. But if this, if we didn't have this open, if I hit stop, and then if I close this toolbar and I hit play, um, you can see the faceting on here. It's not getting the shading information. It's normal shading information. So if you're seeing this error, it's because you don't have a OpenGL viewport open. And when you when you start at Octane. So that's a limitation I think that we need to um, get worked on, but that's just how it is right now. Okay, so, all right, looking at the comments. Da, 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 da. Okay, so we've got, um, yeah, we need to make this part of the standard mode layout, I think probably. So one of the problems is um, also a lot of like adding these things uh, doesn't, um, doesn't, if you delete your config, you lose it. And there's no way to sort of export that config fragment, at least that I know of. In fact, I asked Joe Angel, the guy who programmed all this stuff, and he's like, I don't know. So <laughs> if you delete your uh, Moto config, which people sometimes do when they get errors, you gotta recreate this layout, which is kind of a bummer. Um, okay, so I think there's that. Oh, if you want to go system um, form editor, and uh, if you want to get an icon there, you can say, um, find or find form like this and I can should be able to click on like this guy here and here it says custom a I should be able to load up an icon here so if I go to I think it's in my moto content maybe I think I've got an icon somewhere here possibly octane viewport icon okay and then, so that should pop up and see, I've got a little um, Octane icon there, a little Octane, do the same thing for this one, a little Octane icon there. 
and we've got Octane Icon. So after you do this, make sure you either go to um, config save or you know quit mode, it'll save the config automatically. Come back in, if you crash, you lose it and you have to start over. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm just gonna load up a sample scene. Let me just check the comments. Octane NVIDIA AMD is an issue. Yes, it is. Octane is a CUDA rendering program. So it is, um, well, I don't wanna say it's NVIDIA only because they do have an Apple uh, metal, I believe they're using version. So right now it's either Apple, and I think that's basically experimental still, or uh, although, you know, it's probably somebody with a Mac can chime in. I think it actually does work on Moto on a Mac um, or NVIDIA. So AMD, you are out of luck with, with Octane. Um, okay. So I'm gonna actually, yeah, so I usually just work in this viewport. So let me just close this one up. I'm gonna hit um, uh, open. I'm gonna open up my test scene here and we can start messing around in Octane. Okay, so so this is not um, sort of a really high poly model. You can see, all, maybe you can see like a, um, all the polygons there. It's cut like maybe 3 million polygons. So, or maybe it's, no, it's not that much, like half a million polygons. Um, from Sketchfab, and I'll put I'll find the uh, credits somewhere where I'll put it on the video. But so we'll just use this as our sort of standard, uh, our little model here for um, for this demo. And I'm just going to go over to the shading tree. I've got my backdrop, and I've got Nefertiti. So Nefertiti's got three texture maps, and one of the reasons again we did this uh, layout is because we've got images right here, and we have presets right here, and you're going to use these when you want to change HDRs or something like that. So you may want to, you know, if you're in assets and you, you can easily just go to images and I've got an HDR folder here and just a ton of like um, HDR images. Here's a bunch from like Polyhaven. These are all free. Polyhaven's awesome, by the way. All the stuff's like white, like uh, open license. You can, all the textures, all the, all the HDRs, everything. Um, and you could just sort of, you know, drag these into your, into your environments from here. Whereas in the Octane layout, you couldn't do any of that stuff. So. Uh, let's go back over here and I'm just gonna um, fire this up. Actually, let me turn off these textures like this and I'll just go ahead and fire it up like that. So Octane is gonna have a very um, limited understanding. By the way, I'm just using the um, little mouse wheel to like adjust the uh, size of this. Um, Octane has a very limiting, limited understanding of the, of the shader tree. You see Deluxe Paint vibes. <laughs> That's... You're, you're, you're dating yourself there, FX node. Um, so it's gonna grab um, some basic material properties. For instance, you're gonna see like, if I change the roughness here from 40 to like five, it's gotten pretty shiny. If I go to like, you know, um, you know 80, it's very rough, right? So it's gonna convert Moto's material properties into the glossy material properties um, of, of Octane. Uh, and it's not a one-to-one -one conversion necessarily. Like, you know, the, the BRDF, which is, I think, the bi-directional reflectance something, <laughs> basically the microstructure of the material that um, determines, like, the rendering output, the look of a material, um, is different in, in Modo than it is in any of the Octane materials. And Octane has multiple BRDFs, which we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at. Somebody, somebody type up what BRDF stands for. It's going gonna, it's gonna to bother me. Um, and it's going to understand basic textures. It's not going to know any gradients or any moto procedural textures, but it will get basic um, basic textures over here. You see, I've got a diffuse color texture. It's going to get that. This is a big texture. These are like 4K textures. Um, and it's going to see, you know, roughness, and it's, it's going to see normal, and it's going to see, you know, displacement. It's going to see, you know, it's going to see a number of these. But the shade, you're going to have to get into the schematic to use Octane. That's just the way it is. Part of our job, I think, in the coming uh, months is to create a, um, a sort of user-driven structure for what we want Foundry to include and sort of a priority list in terms of shader tree support. So that's another project. That's maybe a Discord project. But right now, um, the fact is, if you're going to be using Octane, you're going to be using the schematic. And so what I typically do is I'll fire up Octane like this. And now that it's already, I've got this OpenGL viewport open here and it's brought it into Octane. I've got all the correct normal shading information. I can go ahead and turn that into a schematic. You can use schematic down here as well if you want to. You can do that, but I just don't think there's a lot of great, a lot of room down there. It makes everything too small. The great thing about the shader tree is you have, it's just compact. And the sucky thing about schematics are, is they're just, they take a ton of space, especially in motos. It's just super annoying. Um, but it's what we got. So let me just zoom back in here. 
So let me scooch, let me just sort of make some room here. I'm gonna scooch shader tree over. And so the way to get into the schematic is, and if you've been using Octane, you know this, you create an Octane override. So you can just select your mask here and you click the add Octane override. And what Octane is gonna do is it's gonna essentially run a script and it's gonna look at the material and try to translate those settings. If there's any um, uh, textures on there, and it, again, it's only gonna look at one layer of textures and it's gonna create connections for those textures, right? So when I hit um, add Octane override here, you see it just flashes for a minute. This little red dot is up here. This little red sort of gear octane symbol is here. And that's our workspace. So we've got over here in the schematic, right? So we've got, here's our nice messy um, 1980s looking moto schematic with giant nodes. And this is what we're gonna be dealing with folks. So until we get octane, if you wanna like really get on Foundry to get octane going in the shader tree, that this is a good reason because this is what you're dealing with instead of, <laughs> instead of this. Um, but you see we got it hooked up, right? So we've got a diffuse texture, we've got a roughness texture, and we've got a normal texture. And you'll see that this is called a glossy material. And so Octane has a lot of different materials. Moto sort of has the, we call, we call it uber materials. There's a material that, that can be, it can be diffused, it can be glossy, it can be specular, meaning like glass. It could be, uh, you use it for subsurface scattering, you could use it for metal. Now Octane has a number of materials. I could go over here and say click new material and you can see that there's a bunch of materials here. We've got clipping materials for doing booleans. We've got uh, composite materials for, for you know mixing materials. We've got diffuse, we've got glossy, which is what this one is. We've got a hair material, we've got metallic materials. We've got a mixed material. We've got uh, specular, which is like glass or water, um, shadow catchers, portals. We've got tune materials. Um, then when there's two sort of uber materials, the universal material, and a standard surface material. Now the standard surface material is the one I think they're gonna go with moving forward. It's the, some collaboration with um, like Arnold and some other groups, I guess, to like sort of create a standard material. Sort of material X-like maybe, maybe that's the one, I don't know. But they're trying, it's sort of a, an attempt to do sort of make a universal material. I don't actually like them because um, there's a ton of attributes, right? They have to cover every single possible material. So there's a million attributes. And in the shader tree or the uh, note, the schematic, it's just this giant thing. We're over here. Um, I only have the attributes for that this gloss material, so I think it's a little easier to work with. And if I want to change this to to a different material, I can do that. So I'll show you how to do that in one second. So I don't I don't think we need to necessarily go through all the material properties. I think um, people generally know what these are, but you do have, like I said, different BRDFs, right? So. There will be some different, you know, there's the original Octane one, and then they've incorporated different BRDFs along the way. And these are all documented as well, by the way, um, uh, as they've you know improved Octane over the years. I typically go with GGX or GGX Energy Conserving. I think that's a more modern BRDF than the Octane one. And if you just wanted the diffuse, it actually separated it out in Octane 2024, where you have um, a separate diffuse material as well, not dealing with any sort of reflection rays or specular Rays. So um, you can mess around and get some different looks there, which maybe I'll show in a second. Now you can you can also convert materials. So if I want this Nefertiti to be like a, a like a, a bronze head, I can select my uh, glass material here and I can convert it to a metallic material. So I click that, and now I've got a metallic head there. Now I've got to go in here and sort of rearrange my nodes a little bit. My normal is still connected. My roughness is still connected. Let me just kind of get these out of the way a little bit. But you can see my um, diffuse material, while it's still connected, it's not doing anything. Now there's a way to blend um, a diffuse material sort of back in with this octane material. Like I can go in here and I think it's a specular map. So if I, if I put this to zero, we're back to sort of the glossy. I put this at one, we're at the metallic. But really what we wanna do is, is get a separate specular color on here. So this is where you start hooking up nodes to get attributes, right? Versus adding layers in the shader tree. So if we want a sort of bronze colored bust here, I'm gonna to have to add a texture. And so that's where we go over here and all of our textures are over here under new texture. So I go to new texture and then there's a whole bunch of textures. So all of these procedural ones, this huge giant list here, which I'm gonna collapse in a second, um, like I said, there's there's a a scene and on the Discord, and, and there's also a video on the YouTube channel that goes through every single one of these. And there's a ton because a lot of these have multiple 
textures within them. So tons of procedural textures that come with Octane. Um, what we'd like to see eventually is the Moto procedurals converted into um, OSL, just like this one here. You see this one, Cinema 4D Noise. These are all the Cinema 4D procedurals in just one layer. So I, I, if I add that, I could get to any of the procedurals that Cinema 4D has, and they work in Octane because they were converted to OSL. Uh, but here I, I just want an RGB uh, color. So I'm just gonna click RGB color, and then I can just use, now again, we're not using the Moto properties um, over here, the item properties. We have our own Octane properties window. So again, if you, if you have stuff in the shader tree, they all appear here, but you know, for whatever reason, in, the Octane developer decided to have its own properties window instead of them being down here. Now maybe a further a future integration we get rid of the Octane properties window so we, we don't have to have two properties window, windows open. But you know, you select the color just like you would in Moto. You can go to your, your metals and you know, pick a bronze or something and, and there we go. Then we can go in and start, you know, maybe I'll unhook roughness here and we can take a look at a, um, just, just take a look at some different BRDF. So this is an Octane BRDF. Then I go to GGX, you can tell it's different, right? So again, like some of these GG, uh, these, these um, BRDFs and they are, documented over on Otoy are gonna give you different looks. So again, Octane, kind of older one, GGX, kind of the newer one. And they can go in here and, and adjust roughness and things like that, right? So let's see, let me take a look at, um, is there a solo um, mode in Octane similar to Moto currently or overlay? There is a solo. So let me hook up um, roughness again. So again, if I just kind of hold over this, it'll pop up and go to roughness. I should be able to click this and up here, there should be a uh, solo node, boom, and there's my roughness. So does that answer your question? So unsolo, solo. If I wanna see the um, normal map, normal map. Cool. Um, baking, so Octane does have baking. That is definitely out of scope for this, this video, <laughs> but it does have baking. And it's basically lightning fast, like everything in Octane. Um, so, um, again, I'll, I'll get back to this in a second, but so if I, if I look in here, like if it's just lightning fast, right? It's just unbelievably fast how, how fast Octane is. And um, the baking is basically that fast, but it's not something, I think William maybe has done a couple tutorials on it. Um, it's not super sophisticated. There's a baking camera, but we'll, we'll get to that. We'll, that's one thing we need to do is, is get a list of, of things and more advanced features in Octane. Um, to show. So I just wanted to actually, let me show you this. This is sort of what I was planning on doing. We don't have to stick to this, by the way. People are saying like, you know, do, show me, we want to do something else, we can do that. But I did want to show, um, you know, Discord, the UI, basic materials, so glossy, uh, BRDF, um, you know, metallic specular layer at SSS, you know, go over displacement, go over some of that, how to use a gradient, um, how to use like a, a substance. And we'll see, we'll see how much time we have, I guess. A, I'm going pretty slow here. Some basic kernel settings and, and camera settings. So this is sort of the idea here. So let me just maybe, I don't know, I might have to move faster, but um, just going back, let me just go back to the schematic here. And so I can, again, like you can convert this to, again, multiple materials, or I can convert this back to specular. So this is, um, a specular would be like a glass or water. We have a pretty high roughness factor here on the specular material, right, our roughness. Basically, if, if the channel is, is connected and that channel exists on the material 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 you are converting to, it's gonna keep that connection. And notice it disconnected the RGB image, right? Like the RGB color, because there's no RGB color, no diffuse color channel on a specular material. But you can see how, again, just this, just the speed of Octane, and there's a huge difference between BRDFs here. There's, there's the Octane BRDF and the GGX BRDF. BRDF. Um, but you can see how unbelievably fast Octane is. And if I pull roughness out here and just sort of dial in, um, maybe we'll just keep it at zero. You can do things like, you know, change the uh, IOR like that or something much lower like that, you know, sort of very close to zero. Um, something like water, you can do things like do a uh, thin wall essentially uh, change it so it's not a solid. So right now it's, it's, it's looking at this like a giant block of glass. If I hit thin wall, you might want to use this for, you can use this for like bubbles or um, depending on what you're doing, uh, uh, water sometimes, um, if you're just looking at it from, from, the, from above the surface or 
um, windows even sometimes sometimes that's useful and uh, fake shadows is something you could turn on often where you, you get a little bit of a render speed increase without any sort of quality loss I think it's not doing a refraction there, Ray, but I could be wrong. Uh, but this has you know tons of tons of features here. You've got dispersion and film, so you can you know give it a sort of a film to give it sort of a cool look there, or add some um, you know a dispersion coefficient to get that sort of dispersed. Again, the speed is just unbelievable, right? And you can also do um, a medium. So why don't we talk about that real quick? Let me just turn this back to zero. So a medium would be uh, something for subsurface scattering or something for like a colored glass. So I can go to medium and I go over here and these are fairly well organized text. Basically all the different, um, you have textures and you have things like mediums and edge width and things like that. You'll see them over here. So we have a new medium, which is right here. And we would want an absorption medium and then we would, um, typically you'd want this uh, invert absorption. So usually this is the, instead of saying, you know, I want you to absorb red, is you're basically saying I want you to, if you invert it, I want you to make this red. Otherwise, you know, what you're telling it is, is absorb red, so you're gonna get cyan, right? Sort of the opposite color. Um, and then you can adjust like the density and, and things like that. And, and, and that's how you would make something like colored glass, right? So, um, Hopefully I'm not going too fast here, but I just want to just want to touch on a bunch of the little things. So this is so if you're doing transparent like glass water, that's the specular material, right? If you're doing your typical moto material, that's the glossy material. If you're doing a a, a metal material, um, that's the metallic material. And again, you can get to all these things with the universal material or the um, standard uh, material that they're trying to incorporate. But you're just dealing with a a lot more of attributes that you're not going to be really using. So unless you're going for really advanced effect, it's not really something you would use. So let me turn this back to, um, uh, let me actually show you this. So if you look at the, um, if you go up here and you can take a look at our workspaces, all your overrides over here will show up in workspaces, right? And so I've got this backdrop material here, which is just a black. If I add an override to that, You'll see that it's added it to the workspace here. I can get to it by going to the workspace like this. You can select it here, you see it's selected, or you can get to it by just clicking here, it should auto switch workspaces, all right? I will say if you wanna duplicate a material, make sure you use the duplicate octane uh, override here or instance, do not control D duplicate it. It will not work, it'll mess up the schematic somehow. So always use these to duplicate. Okay, so let's go in here. And let's just, again, let's go back to um, Glossy really quick. And let's just hook back our um, color, color in here. And now you'll see we've got a octane. Now this is the other thing that people sometimes are, have, have trouble with. So this is a moto texture locator with a special channel called an octane projection going into the projection node. Now, typically with, we're kind of spoiled by moto texture locators. There's super, there's tons of features on them, right? You have all these different, you know, sizing and repeats and offsets and stuff like that. Most of that's not going to be supported in Octane. The sizing will and the repeats and 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 uh, some of the offsets and stuff will, but a lot of a lot of these sort of really cool features like, um, you know, you know, particle maps and things like that aren't going to be uh, uh, particle replication or texture particles aren't going to be doable in Octane. But often if you're in here in Octane, and, you, and the only reason I got these moto texture locators is because I had it set up in a shader tree first, and then I added an override, and it created those for me. Otherwise, um, if you're just starting from scratch, you need to be able to use Octane or figure out, know how to add Octane uh, projections. So if I go over here to diffuse color, and I want to add that texture back on here, I go over here to add texture, so new, new texture, and then I want an RGB image right here, boom. And you'll see it didn't give me that um, moto texture locator we're used to, it gave me an octane projection node. And you'll see all it does is tell me what UV set it is, right? One or zero, let me just go over here and hook up our file name actually. So here's our file. So after you add the image, you actually have to drag it. Let's just do it from scratch here. So go over here to images. You would have to drag it in from images like this. It's already in the in the workspace, so you'll see it here. And it's going to have a file name attribute. 
If you don't see the file name attribute, you can go to channels and you can find it down here and you just, you just drag that in to make sure file name is visible. And that has to be connected to the file name there of the Octane node, just like that. Let me just go ahead and do that. And then, yeah, and then you've got your UV map here. So now Octane, I'm, I'm pretty sure only supports two UV maps. Um, or previously, you know, in Moto, we're used to having unlimited UV maps. So that's something you need to get used to. Again, that may be a feature request. I'm pretty sure it's an, a limitation of, of Octane itself. Um, but you're really, you know, if you're used to using a ton of like junk UV maps or special case UV maps, you really, I think you're only going to be able to use two in, in Octane and you set them up here, right? Um, and also you, you use this node to do your repeats and transform. So if I want to repeat it, I do 50% and it does a repeat. If I want to zoom in, I do like 200% and it zooms in, right? So so that's your that's your sort of um, on the equivalent would be on the moto texture locator they would be like these uh, repeats right here the uv repeats uh, vertical wraps and horizontal wraps right here we don't have that in octane if we're using octane octane projection we have um, just a scale value right here so yeah that's super great you know in terms of no udim it does actually support udims fx node um and there's some questions, I think, in the uh, Discord about that. It's not super straightforward, and it might not support um, UDIMs from Modo's interface directly. Uh, so that may be a feature request, but you can you can use Octane nodes to make UDIMs work. I've done it, but it's, it's and I can't remember how I did it, but it is possible. But yeah, um, th these are some things that need to be improved. But, you know, in terms of, of UV maps, you can get one or two. Let's take a look at a... Um, a triplanar map. So let me just pull this off and I'm going to load up a texture here. So let me just go over to images or uh, presets and go to like, uh, let me just find like, you know, maybe a simple texture here. I don't know. We can do, um, man, Moto really needs to increase its get better um, default textures. These are ancient PBR. Okay, here we go. Let's just go concrete. That looks good. So we got a concrete uh, color here. So I'm just gonna load that up. So now we have it here. If I wanna do a triplanar map, I would go over here to diffuse and I would come over here and I would say new, new texture. And I want a triplanar map that's right here. So click that. And so here we've got a triplanar map we have we can map a different texture to each axis, but typically what I do is I'll just click the first one and we're gonna do new texture again. And then we say RGB image like that. So now we've got our RGB image in here and we're going to come over here to our um, images and drag in our concrete and hook up the file name. Now it's starting to work, you see not quite. What we need to do lastly is here we've got a UV projection. We need to undo the UV projection and we need to add a triplanar projection. So we go over here to projections, new projections, and here's all our projections, box, uh, uh, syndrilical, we got mat caps, UVs, um, spherical, triplanar, so we want triplanar, we're gonna click that right here into projections. And then we're going to hook up all of these, so you just shift click all these guys and hook them up here. And now we've got triplanar concrete, and we can adjust the scaling here, like that, or like that. Now you may be asking yourself, telling yourself like, that is a lot of work, that is a lot of nodes, that seems like a huge pain in the ass. It is, because in Moto, all you have to do is select triplanar from the texture locator and then select the scale channels and channel hollow it or adjust them or whatever. Shader tree is way better. There's, there's not gonna be any like, arguments about that. Um, and it's, an, it's important, I think, on a lot of levels to get the shader tree uh, working in, in Octane because um, it, it, it's a unique feature of Moto, and if we could have a, a Moto Indie version or a Moto non-commercial version that comes with Octane, and we have this easy, awesome layer-based shading system, that will introduce a, a whole new group of people to rendering um, with Octane and introduce them to Moto. And a lot of people, especially 2D designers, they look at this stuff and they're like, yeah, 
no thanks, I'm just gonna stick to Photoshop and Illustrator and I just don't wanna do it. And you look at this and you're like, oh yeah, just well, it's, it's like Photoshop, right? Yeah, basically, it's basically like Photoshop with you know channels, uh, you know, material channels, like effects, right? You, and and it's, super, it's super great. So I think it's super important to get Octane to work with um, the uh, 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 shader tree over here. But anyway, okay. So, so just kind of, again, quickly going through this, um, let's, I'll get back to maybe show quick displacement and baking texture and some vertex maps, but let me just take a look at some of these kernel settings really quick and some of these, some of these buttons down here, if you're, if you have, if you're kind of wondering what these do. So let's go back to, um, this view and maybe we can change views here. We got our, again, now this is something that sort of jumps out at you because the shader tree is not working. We have one texture in the shader tree, right? We have um, that diffuse color texture, and we have another texture hooked up in the, in the nodes, an octane, so they're not matching, right? So that's an issue. And I'm pretty sure that um, uh, uh, Paul, who does this, uh, who does the, the kit here, is gonna make um, triplanar mapping. Um, when you add an octane, being able to set up triplanar mapping in Moto and then hit an octane override and it'll automatically hook up triplanar for you so you don't have to do that whole convoluted thing I showed you. Um, maybe that's already in here, I haven't tested it, but that if it's not, it should be in here pretty quickly. But the reason I showed triplanar is triplanar is super useful and it's, it's, it's hard to set up. So actually, uh, Warren um, did a really great triplanar texture tutorial on, on Pixel Fondue, but um, if you if you forget how to do that do this after watching this this video but anyway so we've got this set up let's take a look at some take a look at some um, kernel settings here so this little gear these are your main octane render settings right they're not going to be over here under the under the render button they're going to be over here under um, this thing right here octane kernel and so right here max samples is set at five thousand and that is uh the sort of the default this is what octane standalone starts at it used to be sixteen thousand. they're both insanely way too high you can easily um, set this to like uh 512 and it's going to look pretty good so you can see this going up down here it's already at 512 and it looks pretty good right very little noise now, if you want to add denoising, you do that on a per camera setting. So right now you see we've got, here's our passes. We've got just a beauty pass. If I want to adjust, turn on denoising, it's not in the render settings, it's in the camera settings. So I click on my camera and I go to the imager and I go down here and I click enable denoising, right? And now if I look over here, I've got denoising as an output right here. So we've got beauty and denoise beauty. This thing is so noise free, even at 512 samples, you can't really see any noise. But if I go back here and set this to like, um, let me let me actually just see if I can get some noise here to show the difference. Let me just go like over here. I'm going to pull out my concrete and I'm going to set my samples to like uh, five. And I'm going to adjust the camera a little bit. Even then, you're probably not going to see this on YouTube, but here's the beauty. Pretty noisy, right? Denoise Beauty. So I have denoising on in basically every um, animation that I do. I, I think I think it should be on by default. Uh, I think the it adds a completely negligible amount to render time and, and RAM, but it's not on by default. And you have to turn on a per camera basis. So if I, if I do another camera, if I add another camera here, and I just sort of uh, zoom in, and I right click and I make this, let me just put it up here. And I right click and I make this my render camera, Maybe well, we might have our first moto crash here. Don't do it. Don't do it, 17. Did it do it? Seems to have frozen. Okay. Well, thankfully, I have multiple motos. Oh, wait, did it not? Did it? No, yep. Appears to have disappeared. Okay. <laughs> Let me go back to moto here. Um, I did prepare for this with multiple motos open. So yeah, this is, so, you know, the crash there, I really think that's probably a moto thing and not an octane thing. Um, oh, you can see I don't have my, uh, do I have my, yeah, okay. So, oh, and I actually, let me restart it because I had this one set up before I did all the, all the viewport stuff. So let me close that. Let me load up moto. 
17. Come over here so I get my Octane viewports back. This is what I'm talking about. I had I had set up that second um, moto before I had I had launched it before I had changed all the viewports. So we'll get get back to that in a second. So moto is loading. Is this just me or do you guys have? Um, we'll just pop get my thing here while moto is taking its time to load. So do you guys is it take forever for moto to load for you guys or is it just me like if i launch moto it takes like what well, okay it just popped up it can sometimes take like a minute or so to you know to get i don't know if it's checking licensing or what but okay so we've got our oh, it's asking me for a license key okay launch licensing you gotta be kidding me I am actually just going to load up Moto 16 here to wrap this one up because I think that's going to give me uh, a more trouble-free experience. <laughs> so, Moto opens super fast for you? I, what is that? Because it, it absolutely does not open super fast for me. And Joe was saying Moto takes a long time to launch. Yeah, I see. it takes forever to launch for me. Every, every new version of Moto takes longer to launch. Takes forever with kits. Oh, maybe maybe the kits have something to do with it. I have a lot of kits. Um, yeah. So okay, it's about popped up here. Let me just sort of squish this into view. Also, like every time I go from sixteen to seventeen, it, it asks me to like relicense everything. We so need a better licensing system and all that. Okay, so. Uh, okay. All right. So let me just sort of get Moto back into the right tiny little 1920 by 1080 viewport here and then we will continue um okay so let me just pop back here all right let me know everybody see moto again what up nefertiti this is moto 16 but i think we're fine uh if i shut down launch again it's instant that's interesting. Okay. Um, basically, I think what I was showing is that, you know, you have to, let me just add another camera and I'm gonna right click and, and make, um, let's take this, our initial camera here. And if we had, again, we wanna turn on, go to the imager. We wanna turn on uh, denoising. And over here, if I, if I make this the render camera, set as render camera, so now camera, um, two is the render camera, so we'll just sort of freestyle this and push in on Nefertiti's face right here, and hit render. It's not going to pick up that it has denoising because it's, it's not a global setting; it's a per camera setting. I don't know if that's. I suppose that gives you more flexibility, but you see, there's no denoising here. On the, there's no denoise beauty pass right here, so I do have to go to my camera and set up enable denoise, and there we. Okay, so let's take a look at just a few more camera settings while we're here. Um, let me just pull back a little bit. So we've got a, we've got our camera right here, and it 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 um, defaults to using the Moto Moto F stop for aperture and the Moto focal distance, right? So if I want to change the focal distance and use the Octane tools, I need to turn that stuff off. So if I want to come in here, come in right up to her nose, like this. And if I click off Moto F-stop for aperture, you'll see it's using the Octane aperture here. We're in really close, and so one is gonna make it very blurry. And I wanna use, I don't wanna use Moto Focal Distance, I wanna use Octane Focal Distance. I don't wanna use Auto Focus, which is just a ray pointing out. I wanna actually use my little tool down here, AFI, where I can just click and determine where the setting's gonna be. So let me just sort of crank this up a little bit so we can see the eye in focus, this eye in focus, tip of the nose, in focus, lips in focus. And you'll also notice it sets um, keyframes for these, just automatically keys. I'm not sure that's a great thing. Let me just pull this up a little bit here. Um, but it, it automatically keys. So again, just keep it in mind, if you go over here and you're just sort of, you're just testing, you change the time frame. you're just like testing different focal depths. Um, it's going to create keyframes when you do that. So keep that in mind. And you can, you can unkey these, but it just that's how it, that's its default behavior. Okay, let's just go back here. Uh, so that's so that's some basic camera thing. There's some other stuff on the imager we can do like Aces tone mapping. If you are into Aces, I think Volker maybe had a tutorial about that. 
Um, you can do things like adjust the exposure. So let me just pull out here a little bit and focus in. So we could do, you know, adjust the exposure. We can um, do some vignetting, you know, some other stuff like that within the camera, which is pretty cool. There's also some different um, camera response curves. So you can actually go down here. And, and a lot of these are, are actually available in, um, as post effects. So if you watch my tutorial about um, compositing in Octane, you can see that you can do a lot of this stuff in, in, in a composite tree rather than right on the camera. But there's kind of some built in like different like camera sort of like, you know, film curves, basically, lots of Kodak and, and um, Agfa film curves. These are, you know, kind of fun to mess around with, but you really want to make sure it just, it defaults to sRGB and that's what you want to keep it at. And, you know, unless you're doing, um, you know, unless you want to look at it linearly and have it like a linear workflow and, and some things like that. So anyway, that's just, just real quick thing on, on the, um, on the camera. Let's go back to our kernel settings. So again, we've got our max samples here, diffuse depth, specular depth, um, scatter depth. These are things that you can um, change if you want to. I never do. You know, if you have a lot of transparent materials like glass behind glass behind glass, you're going to want to do something like ramp up the specular depth. That's the sort of the amount of passes or like, you know, um, transitions a ray can make. But typically these things, you just, you don't really mess with that much. The one you're going to mess with is, with, with is ray epsilon. And people sort of refer to this as the fix everything <laughs> um, uh, problem because with ray epsilon, you it, it's sort of like um, it's a minimum distance. I think that um, a ray makes the, the calculations are done between between surfaces that, that a ray will sort of a minimum minimum distance between surfaces that a ray will um, intersect with and, and will do calculations on. So if you have like really small items that are very close together, or perhaps even very large items. Um, you might need to adjust the ray epsilon. You're getting weird render errors. The first thing to check is ray epsilon. Um, another thing you might want to look at is this alpha channel right here. So if I go over here and I turn my backdrop off, we're going to see, let me just change camera. So let's just, I'm going to, hopefully this isn't going to crash again. Normally it doesn't crash when you just right click change, um, set render camera. We'll just try this again, hit, hit render. So here you see the, this backdrop, that's my HDR backdrop, right? So I've got a couple HDRs in here. You know, here's another one. And here's this one. And if you want to get rid of that, you just turn on this little alpha channel button here. Now that's going to be kicked out. And we've got a, I believe it's pre-multiplied with black um, alpha channel. So that's how you can get an alpha and, and, and octane. Now there's some other more complicated settings, like you can determine if um, transparent materials give alphas or not and things like that. But that's not really part of this video. But just generally, that's where you get the alpha channel right here. And you can also have multiple environments. So I can, for instance, say um, maybe I want uh, this environment for my lighting and I want a different environment for the background. So I turn off um, the alpha channel. Let's try multiple environments. So I can right click on here and I can say duplicate. So I've got two environments now. I'm gonna hide these two HDRs and I'm gonna change this gradient to one of my little presets, like a sky gradient and I'm going to, on this one, I'm going to say, this will be the visible environment. And this one will keep as the lighting environment. So here we've got my, my sky gradients, but just make it more saturated so you can see it. Um, so here we've got you know, a visible environment and a um, octane uh, uh, lighting environment. You can kind of see these down here as well. If I sort of hover over this, this little environment icon, and here is the visible environment icon. It's set to texture environment. You can also go to a planetary or daylight environment. Right, so right now we're getting our lighting from HDR. Well, if I want to change my lighting environment to, let's say, daylight environment, use a daylight system, I can just, you can see the change here. It's using texture, that's using the HDR. This is using daylight, this is using a sunlight system. We can use the octane. There's different sunlight systems here. And again, there's a scene, and I believe a little uh, video about using octane, um, you know, sunlight and, and things like that. What you need to do is, is you need to have a, a directional light and it needs to have um, this physical sun checked here. And then you could go in here to the daylight environment and I could do things like um, go to the physical sun and change time of day and, and direction and stuff like that. So like 16 o'clock, I believe, I mean, I do, maybe not, oh. 
there's another thing you have to do. You have to actually go to this environment here and you have to set, um, this is this is where it gets super annoying. I believe I have to go in here and set the, make sure that sunlight is set to directional as well. So you have to set it here and you have to set it directional sunlight here and then you can actually use it to do things like change um, the time of day or you can do the north offset which is you know the latitude or or the offset to change like the directionality of it you can see like the shadows changing there and again there's there's a scene and and, and a, i believe a little a tutorial for this as well um, but that's just sort of the basics of environments right you can have you know hidden environment with an alpha channel you can have an hdr environment you can have um, a daylight environment okay let's just move on real quick let's um why don't i go to let's just Go to my environments and we'll just maybe delete. Well, let's you can keep the environments actually. Let me turn my backdrop back on and then I'm going to change this back to textured environment like this. And then we'll just change our HDR to um, this gallery one, which is a little bit, um, a little bit darker. And we'll turn on our area lights here. So we got a couple area lights. Let's look at them over here. Let's make sure my uh, lights are on and get. Oh, there they are. So we've got a couple area lights here. And so Octane is going to be able to use area lights. And if I if I turn on rotation and just Alt W to have the rotation from the world center, you can see if I change this, you see the reflection there, right? So it's treating an area light like a sort of a, a just a luminous rectangle. And you're not going to have, besides the sunlight, directional lights aren't going to work in Octane. Spotlights will work and you'll have like an octane spotlight and it can be volumetric too. So I'm not gonna demonstrate it here, but there's a scene on the Discord with a volumetric spotlight. And then uh, there's, there should be a little tutorial as well, I believe. Um, so you can have, so spotlights are, 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 you can have like an octane spotlight. So I go over here and I just right click and say, change type and change it to a spotlight. We can drag down here and there's an octane section right here. I can turn this little button here to turn into an octane volumetric spotlight. And I can even over here in my area lights, there's some octane attributes here where you can turn into an octane quad light, which is just, I think, a little more efficient um, way of lighting, right? There's not really a, a quality difference. There's some other lights coming in, in octane called analytical lights um, that are part of 2024, but they're not um, integrated yet. But you can see like here's sort of a bluish color, like it's gonna get intensity as well. So I turn on uh, channel hall, let me see if I can go over to my light real quick and go to my channel hall here and turn on channel hall. Uh, right mouse will do intensity so I can crank up my intensity here, of my light, and I can change the color. Let's just change to something really garish like red. So it, it's gonna pick up the color and intensity of, of your of your light. So you can use that. You don't have to do some special octane thing. Um, but you know, it's, it's the lighting, you know, Typically, when I do product renders and things like that, I'm going to be using HDRs mixed with um, uh, um, uh, area lights. You can also just you can use area light textures. Like if I go over here to my um, my asset library and go to HDR, I can look at. I think I've got some light um, textures in here. I think from, oh yeah, Grayscale, Grayscale Gorilla has a bunch of awesome stuff. So I think in here, and maybe this one, you can see there's some, just some like image lights, HDR images that Grayscale Gorilla has that you can use as, um, as you know, map to a, a, a plane and just use, with luminous amounts and just use those as lights in, in Octane as well. That's another way to do lighting in Octane. Um, but yeah, I think if you're just starting, getting started with it, play with area lights, play with HDR lights or HDR images and get your, do your lighting that way. Uh, yeah. So I don't know. I think we've been an hour, so I'm, I'm totally okay with going longer. I just don't want to like, maybe I should do a couple things here real quick, just like save image and render animation. Then we can decide if we want to look at, um, displacements. I think gradient inputs would be a good one to look at real quick. Um, maybe some other things. But let me let me just really quickly, if I want to save this image, just the image, this little button right here, I click, I can choose a ping, you know, or an EXR. I can also um, choose a single layer or multiple layers, right? And this will get all your layers down here if you're using AOVs. Uh, again, that's not, I'm not going to get into AOVs or render passes or um, 
in this in this you know intro primer but there's a pretty pretty extensive video on that on um as well as the scene files on the discord um but you just click here and you would say go to ping 8-bit and you would just say um save just like that you would just save it as a ping right that's a real quick way to save an image you can also just like uh copy the image like that and then i can go over here to like let's say i go over here to like um, my discord and i'll just paste it into the um, octane channel real quick it should just paste the image like that so that's a real great way if you're working with clients or emails you just copy and paste into your email for revisions things like that it's super I, it's super awesome. We gotta have like every everything, every render program needs a copy, right? Um, so that's that's saving um, images. If you want to do an animation, you would come up here and you go into our kernel and you would go to animation tab and um, right here, and you would pick an output folder like that and you would type in um, a file name. You would pick your uh, save type. Now, if I'm doing denoised images. What I want to do is I want to say multi-layer discrete files. And that will save one ping file un regular and one ping file that's denoised, right? Or if I have other AOVs, it'll save a separate ping for each AOV. Now, if you want to do sing um, multi-layer um, like an EXR, you can do that as well. I think Volker uses EXRs a lot. I typically don't. Um, I usually do 16-bit pings. I think that there's typically plenty of, of color headroom for me when I do my compositing. But in here, you're going to do, you're going to set it up like this. You're going to do, you're going to, you're going to go over here. You're going to, let's just go to my desktop here and go to Nefertiti. Pick a folder, go to your animation. We're going to do ping 16-bit. Definitely want uh, multi-layer discrete files. So I get um, uh, both my denoised and beauty, right? And then for motion blur, again, there's a there's a scene uh, file on the Discord that shows you everything you need to have um, checked for motion blur and a video for that. So I'll, I'll suggest you look at those. And then to start the animation, what I do, and let's just do a quick little like maybe camera animation. So I've got my camera here. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna key um, a couple things there. Maybe we'll just do like 30 frames or something like that. We'll come over here like this. Set our scene length here. And so here's our animation, super, super awesome. Gonna win an Oscar. And then what I do is I um, I click this little button right here on the toolbar to start the animation, which is a little film projector. Where is it? I have to get my glasses. This one right here. Click the little film projector here and it's going to um, start doing the animation. So here's rendering frame one. Down here, you can see the number of samples. So I, I, let me just cancel this right now because I have it set to 5,000 samples. So let's go ahead and go to our kernel, change our samples down to like 256, like that. We got denoising on, should be fine. Click my little film guy here and it's going to start rendering. Now, you gotta be a little bit careful because this is still live, unlike um, rendering in Modo. Like I can start screwing around with the camera right here and it's gonna, it's gonna pick up the camera motion. I can even change the samples while it's rendering. You can see how fast this is going. It's just, it's just gonna blast through this. And if I come over here and look at my um, uh, image, my folder here, you can see that I'm starting to pop up here. And if I just look at this as, uh, you know, maybe let's see if I can view these as, as details, we've got, um, Again, two files. We got our denoise beauty because we set, selected discrete files, and we've got our just regular with no denoising, right? So we got two different streams of pings going, and yeah, that's how that's how animation works. So I think that's probably most of the basics. We did animation, we did save image, did a little bit of each one of these. Um, I do have a vertex map. I think I think showing a vertex map and a composite texture. And gradients is worthwhile, and maybe um, the how to use substance and displacements worthwhile. So I'm I'm happy to uh, keep going for another you know half hour, however long this takes. Um, if if you guys want to do that, I'm just going to keep my eye on the on the um, chat here. Do you guys want to you guys want to keep going? You think it's worthwhile? If people watch this six months from now to like show how to do vertex maps and and gradients. William, you still there? Should 
do I keep going? Uh, power subdued to nerves. We're talking about, oh, okay, some other stuff here. I think I'm not getting a lot of feedback, but I'm going to keep going because I think this is going to be worthwhile for, so Ryan's good. Okay, I think I'm going to keep going. Um, okay, so let's just go back to, uh, sure, Jawad's keep going. Okay. Dario. Okay, so I'm going to keep going here. So let's just pop back in. This is almost done anyway. So um, yeah, I think it's done. So there's, you know, 30 frames. Now, like I said, I usually do the render network, um, in which case you need to export an animation. And I think that deserves its own video. So I'm not going to do that right now. I think we have a whole video on render network. Um, is I think it's super important to Octane and Moto users and especially professionals like um, I use render network for every single project and I don't use it just once because you know if you're doing projects for clients you probably render out the entire project six or eight times over the course of a month or two that you're working on it and it's it's render the render network is, is game changer right I never render locally except for stills how about loading and saving octane presets that's a good one okay so let's do that so let's jump um, let's just start a new scene control in and I'm going to um, just do a, uh, let's do a sphere here and push in a little bit and let's do, let's call this, um, we'll just call this a sphere. Oh, and by the way, um, we're just getting that for down a little bit. Um, in terms of the shader tree, Octane will recognize material P tags and it'll recognize item masks. It is not gonna recognize part or selection set P tags. It's not gonna recognize nested P tags. All the super awesome stuff the shader tree can do with determining what parts of your scene are shaded with what attributes. Octane doesn't support that stuff yet. So, and I have a feeling a shader tree, full-blown shader tree API needs to be done um, prior to this. I'm using a, 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 49, a 4090 um, card for this, Gustavo. Um, SSS, I think it's different than Moto. Yeah, I'll show you. I'll show you SSS as well. So let's um, let's do our sphere here. Did I somehow delete the sphere? Or do I have like a, okay, isolate on or something? Um, okay, so let's just fire this up and let's just do a quick um, let's do a quick preset. Okay, so why don't we do this? So uh, oh, Mike James is here. Oh, good. How you doing, Mike? I think Mike, are you in Alaska? Is that right? I think Mike works aircraft industry up in Alaska. I could be wrong. Let me know, Mike. Um, so you can use, like I said, um, things like uh, Kixel and um, Substance and Octane really easily. So I'm just going to use. I have the Kixel kit. If I go to System and Kit, I think you got this Quixel kit here. Kixel, Quixel. It's somewhere around here. Starts with a Q. Anyway, well, I hope I have it in here. I think I do. Um, I think uh, Ben Holling, who's a Moto developer, made it. And yeah, here it is, Quixel Bridge. And you can get that. I think we'll get that on the Pixel Fondue uh, GitHub when we get that going, which is a whole other project. But uh, Mike, yes, Anchorage. Okay, nice. Um, and so anyway, with that, with, with that bridge in, I can actually just go up here and right click and say, um, you know, select one of these guys and, and export it. So I can, I can, um, go over here to export, um, click this guy and let's see how I can go back here and just click, you can, you can actually do, do like export settings and you can decide like, you know, what textures you're going to export you know you can click them on and off like i never do gloss because we use roughness um things like that and then you can just you should just be able to go over here and click export and it should pop up in moto here in a second so it will export down here export successful go to moto and um i've got those scene these items uh textures in moto now we'll just close that so we get a little more view on here like this and I can, um, so I didn't, one of the things I needed to do is actually have my sphere mask selected. It would have dropped them all in the right mask. And it also would have, um, I should have had the UV map selected to put it on the UV, but there's a whole, again, it's fix of undo. There's a tutorial on this existing already, but I'm just showing you that you can use um, uh, Quixel like that. 
So I'm gonna let me just kill a couple of these guys. I don't I don't want all of these, but I do want displacement. And um, let me just turn off displacement. Let me, I'm gonna show displacement separately. So let's actually turn off normal. Let's delete a few of these guys. And let's just get an HDR in here to get some decent lighting um, as well. So let me just pop open this and just grab like um, an HDR from Polyhaven maybe. We'll just go to a Polyhaven one and pick like maybe this one here. Let's drag it in. And well, that's kind of an ugly one. Maybe not that one. turn on um, alpha channels so we're able to see it. Okay, so there's our sand, right? Let's go back to Octane here. And maybe, um, whoops, I just pulled that out. Good one. And scooch this over a little bit. Sorry for the rearranging. I just want this to be on, as big on your screen as possible. So, okay, so again, we've got you know, roughness, we've got, um, and we've got diffuse, and we'll just add a um, octane override on there. It's gonna add the override, and it's gonna create that schematic for us. And if I want to do um, some displacement, I've got some options here. So I wanna set this up automatically so you can see how it works. So I go over here to displacement, and I come over here, and there's, it's not under textures, there's a, there's a displacement uh, button right here, so you click that. Now I've got some options, vertex displacement, vertex displacement mixer, and texture displacement. So right now, texture displacement is a really amazing technology. It's sort of a volumetric um, texture displacement. It's super fast, like basically immediate. It doesn't increase your vertice count, but it only works with UV mapping, which gives some limitations. So I'm gonna show you this one first, and then I'm gonna show you how to get around some of the UV mapping display, um, limitations. And then vertex displacement is gonna operate kind of like, um, like it would in Modo, if you're doing like um, a displacement, it'll just it, it basically subdivide your mesh, and it's just displacing vertices, takes more memory, but it'll work with procedurals without any baking or anything, and it's just another option. So we go to texture displacement like this, and so we've got a new displacement node. So I'm just going to kind of push in here. So now we need to add a texture. So I'm going to come up here, say new texture, and we want a grayscale image, right? Grayscale image, boom. Gives me that. Now I've got to go find my image, my image tab. And let me just sort of scooch out here. We've got our displacement image that came in. I'm going to drag that in. And then I'm going to um, connect it. You don't have to do all this rearranging if you're not working in a tiny little space streaming space typically connect that there i'm gonna um, then i'm gonna come over to my displacement um, texture here and pull this up i can set the resolution here so maybe i think this is maybe a 2k map and the height so let's do a 0.01 or a 0.1 like that you can see it's basically instantaneous right it's just boom that fast and go over here to my texture and say I go to my texture scale and knock this down like 25% like that or 50%. And you can see how fast displacement works. So very fast, right? So this is an image using the texture displacement and using an image. But what if I want to use um, a procedural texture? So it's going to operate a little bit differently. So let me just unhook this, move this up and go over here. If I want to use a procedural texture, and again, I go over here to new texture. And I want to pick like um, rigid, well, let's just do like a noise, start off simple, something like, um, we do one of the Cinema 4, I'll show you the Cinema 4D noises, they're pretty cool, Cinema 4D noise, so I've got Cinema 4D noise on here, and it's like it's not doing anything, and if I click my Cinema 4D noise, and I, I sometimes I'll go like this, I'll drag it up and put it in diffuse just to take a look at it, get something decent here, like this, or I think there's like a, again, all these noises are in one scene and on the Discord. So you can just like kind of flip through all these really quick and um, take a look at them. So we'll just do something like this, maybe, I don't know. Something like that for noise, maybe that's too many octaves. Now it's not showing up, right? I believe I can also um, solo node this if I, if I need to. Yeah, solo node so you can see the noise. You don't have to look at your diffuse. Um, so that's not working. So what you need to do is unhook that. 
and then we select texture. We need something called a baking texture. So this is a way to bake a procedural in real time and onto um, the displacement, right? So I go over here and I say new texture, and I believe the baking texture is near the top maybe, baking texture right here. We need a search function. This is again another problem with this. There's no search function. There's no like filter for these giant forms. So you gotta like scroll through all this stuff. Um, but yeah, baking texture is right up here. And then I can plug in my procedural to the baking texture like this. And boom, now it's working, right? So this, this baking texture will bake a procedural in real time. By the way, not just for um, displacement, it'll bake, you can plug it into any channel, right? So I can take this baking texture and I can plug it into, um, you know, diffuse color as well, just like that. But, um, but you need that baking texture if you're going to use a procedural for displacement with um, the octane texture displacement. And you also need UVs on your mesh. So if your mesh does not have UVs and you're using um, like triplanar mapping, then you're gonna have to use the vertex displacement um, right here. So new displacement, vertex displacement, or you, would want to, or you would want to create UVs and then use the baking texture and, and, you, and over here, you could use, for this, you could use a triplanar baked to UVs, then in displacement all in real time. So yeah, that's, that's how displacement works. Just a real quick view on displacement. Um, let's look at a couple. There's somebody said um, subsurface scattering. So let's let's do that really quick as well. So let me just stop this. I'm gonna open up another um, another scene. Let's go let's see pixel fondue Discord content maybe. Let's look at our pandas. So yeah, let's do this. So we'll look at the, we'll do a we'll do a I've got my little my little panda here. Let me just sub D it and render this guy out. And we'll just sort of push in maybe to his ears a little bit like this. And so let's do like a quick sub D texture. So here's our panda. Okay, so I'm gonna turn off. Um, the normal and the roughness and um, even the diffuse color for now. And actually, let's, let's keep the diffuse color on. And let's create an octane override. And so you'll see this over here, like this black. That is a shader compilation um, going on in the advanced viewport. So shader compilations, you hear a lot about them in like Unreal Engine, like if you get stuttering in a game, like because and sometimes you do that. If you load up a modern game, it'll do that pre shader, pre, pre compute shaders, and it'll like run for like 30 minutes and then it, you get the lag free game. So that's what that black screen is shader compilation. I don't know if that's just a part of our lives now. I think they're they're trying to do it in the background and so it doesn't turn black like that, but I think that's just a part of how modern graphics cards are going to be working. But you know, anyway, we've got our sub D object in here. And by the way, if I unsub D this, you can see Octane will, will do sub Ds in real time just by itself. Also, if you look at the, any sort of mesh you have is going to have its own Octane tab now. So I can do things like do camera visibility, shadow visibility, things like that. Um, I can also uh, load the cage and do subdivide an Octane, which will basically do the subdivision on the GPU. And, and you know, there's some other uh, things you can do over here. Live geometry update, if this is deforming, um, it, it, it defaults with it on, but if I had it off and it had this like a, a deformation going on, you wouldn't see it in Octane unless you have live geometry update on, then it's gonna like grab any sort of change in on the timeline or um, with a tool, it's gonna update the geometry. But even then, like I can go in and, and, and move this stuff in real time and you get the, just like in preview, it's gonna, you're gonna get that live feedback, which is pretty cool. Um, have you already described a simple two-part material, which is the material controlling the properties of the image above? Uh, maybe, Mike, I will get, yeah, let me get back to that in a second. Let's do subsurface scattering, uh, subsurface scattering real quick. So let's add our octane override, go to um, our guy here. And the way I like to do subsurface scattering, you can use like the universal material or the, um, other standard service material, but I, I think the best way to do it is convert this to a diffuse material like that. I'm actually gonna pull this out here. And then we will um, come over here. We're gonna turn diffuse to zero. 
and let's turn our octane to uh, well, we BRDF octane is fine. What we want to do is we want to add a medium to this, right? So right here we've got um, a medium, and we've got want to come over here and say new medium. We want to do a there's different you now the, the scattering medium is the old one. The random walk medium is the newest one. So do random walk. And then we're gonna have our albedo here. That's gonna be the color. And we've got a density, right? So we'll just put this something really light. And oh, the last thing you wanna do, the reason it's still black, is transmission. You wanna have that at one, transmitting through. So now we've got like um, a subsurface scattering medium. We can up the density to like 10. You can see that going there. Again, like you see I'm switching back between um, 3D viewport and a schematic. That's a problem, right? You cannot do camera navigation in the Octane viewport. Now you can in standalone, so I'm not sure exactly what the problem is. I think maybe Paul tried to implement it, but it didn't work very well. Um, so he took it out, but going forward, we need to be able to adjust the camera in the Octane render viewport and not have to pop back here. Also, we need to be able to fire a render off without having a 3D viewport open in order to, um, you know, not have that shading error. So there's there's some things we need to fix on. Anyway, so you can see the you can see that in the ears and nose, like the classic sort of subsurface scattering part right there. And so if we go back over here, if we change our albedo color, we can get like sort of a, you know, pinkish little subsurface on there. Or we can even use our our map that we already had in the scene, right? This is our diffuse color. Let's pipe it in here. Now we've got that sort of panda colors on albedo. And if you want to make this look like something like a crayon or something with a like a waxy surface, then you can go over here and you can say um, new material. So I can, whoops, sometimes you have, if you if you get a blank spot over here, it, if these are ghosted out, you might not have the uh, schematic selected. So new material, we're going to do a layered material. And then for the first layer, we're going to plug in our, our subsurface guy here to layer one. I'm sorry, into base material. And then we're gonna plug that layered shader into our Octane Override. So now we're operating on a layered shader. You know, our base is the subsurface. And then for layer one, we're gonna go over here and say new material layer, right? So we have new material and new material layer. New material layer, we're going to get a like a specular layer. And we can get that sort of like um, glossy specular coat on top. A little bit rougher like that, but now it's sort of looking like a little, a little bit like a crayon, right? You can even add another layer, like a sheen layer, new material layer, um, sheen. And I do have like a, a tutorial on this as well. You see that sheen is that sort of background on there. So we can you know go to sheen, increase the roughness, and it'll crawl that sheen over the sides, make it less rough, and it'll just have it right on the edge, kind of like a rim light, right? So that's that's, you know, Here's our, make them a little denser maybe, I think. Something like that, it's a little crayon-y looking, anyway. So that's subsurface. Um, let's look at um, doing mixing textures because I think that's an important one as well. So let me uh, sort of unhook a couple things here and I'm just gonna move some things to the side. So here's our, subsurface material. I'm going to go in here. I'm just going to add a new material. We'll just do a glossy and then I'm going to hook our panda texture back up and then hook this back up to the override. Now we're back to just our regular glossy panda. And I think people want to know like how to just sort of layer materials. And this is again, this is sort of it's one of those things. It's, it's super annoying because in the shader tree, it's super easy, right? You just drag in a new layer. It's got a built-in alpha channel. It just works, and you can adjust the opacity or the blend mode. Octane is just way more complicated, and it's unfortunate, but that's where we're at. So there's two ways to do it. We can do a mix material. So I come over here. Uh, let's just go to our images. Let's grab another image maybe. Uh, let's just go to our images here. Let's go to, like, um, maybe plastic and see, like, a black mouse, something better than that. Like a, maybe this little, this is really garish, but it'll make sense. So here we got this new um, image here. I'm just gonna drag it in. So there's our plastic material. 
One way to do it is just a mixed material. So I can unhook this, select diffuse, and what we're going to do is do a mixed texture. So new texture, drag down here near the bottom, mix, and then you can see we've got a first texture, a second texture, and an amount, right? So first texture, we're going to use our um, our panda like that. You can see it's sort of faded. That's because the amount is set to 0.5. If I set it to 1, it's, it's, it's the second texture. If I set it to 0, it's the first texture. So let's go to 0.5 still. And let's, under the second texture, I'm going to select that uh, channel. I'm going to say new texture and then RGB image. And then I'm going to plug in my little stripey plastic image here like that, and now they are blended 50-50. Okay, so that's a way to do blending. There's no mix mixing going on here, that's just blending. Okay, so we'll, there's a whole video on what's called the composite texture that allows you to do all kinds of layering with alpha channels and blending and stuff. I, I could touch on that real quick, but this is just the basic way. Another way you can you can mix things is, is there's all kinds of add and multiply textures here as well. So I can do, they're all kind of down here under operators. So I can do a mix or a multiply or an add or subtract. So if I, for instance, do a multiply and multiply these two together like this and then stick it in, that's kind of like having two textures in the shader tree, the top one set to multiply, right? Not as good as the shader tree. Another thing we can do with the mix texture, let me just plug back in the mix texture here is we can use a texture for a mount. So I can go to a mount here, and I can go over here to my um, images, and I could go to my, my decal folder right here, and I can go to my um, sci-fi alpha images, and I've got some sci-fi alphas here. I think I got these on Gumroad. No, I got these on ArtStation. So let me get something kind of chunky, like, like maybe this one, and I'm just gonna right-click load, and then I'm going to drag that in like this. So I can go to the amount and I can go over here and say new texture. And this time I want to do a grayscale image. And then I plug in my sci-fi alpha to that. And now that is being used, right? So if I, again, I could solo node this and see there's my alpha, right? And there it is, right? So that's how you would use um, um, an, an alpha image to work as a, um, a black and white image, not an alpha channel, but a black and white image to use as a mask between two textures using the mix node. Okay, now what if you have an image with a built-in alpha channel, right? So I may have an image over here. I'm going to look at the this in just a second. Um, so I can go to sci-fi details, and I think these have built-in alphas, right? So if I load this in and look at it, it's, it's a ping with a built-in alpha. You can kind of see it here in the um, thumbnails, right? The ping with the built-in alpha. Use alpha. If I want to do that, I have to use a different texture. Select amount. Uh, I'm just going to drag this guy in because I'm going to use it. Let's go over here. New texture. And you use alpha image. This will use the alpha channel of whatever, Im whatever image is, is being um, plugged in. So this this image, this orange, you know, sort of circle, I'm just going to use its alpha channel. And again, I can, I can solo node that there. That's just the alpha channel of this image, right? So we're using the alpha image node to use that as a mix. And that's another way to do it. Again, shader tree is way better. Dragging an image into the shader tree. This is why I think like uh, using the shader tree is something that could sell Modo. <laughs> Because if you use Octane, you're just used to doing all this crap, right, on, on, in the schematic. You're not used to just, just dragging from here to here, and you're done. It just just works, right? Um, so it's just way better. And this is, you know, it's flexible. They're nodes. Nodes are always flexible. But it's it, they're annoying to work with, okay? And so the, the last thing let me show is just the composite texture. So let me sort of move all these over. And again, there's a whole tutorial on composite texture, but let me just, this is sort of the more modern way. They finally just, Octane 2024 did this. So again, you go over here, new texture. This is really the best way to do layering. Way at the bottom, in fact, it's off the screen here, you'll see um, uh, composite texture. Let me just go ahead. It's way down at the bottom under, op, under 
gosh, it's way at the bottom under utility. It's like way at the bottom, composite texture. And here I can do like a layer one. So let's go back over here. Let's grab my, um, my, my little panda base texture and I'm gonna go over here. It doesn't help that Moto's nodes are like from the 80s as well. They just don't scale well. They're just kind of ugly and they're just kind of old. Anyway, layer one, whoops, can't do that because we need another one in between them. So we have our composite texture here. And then there's a whole nother group of um, nodes we need to use to be able to use the composite texture. And so we can do a layer group, which again, if you watch the composite texture tutorial on Pixel Fondue, I go through this in depth and how they correspond to the shader tree. I'm not gonna do that right now. I'm just gonna say we're gonna, this first layer, you can either have a group of layers or any of these operators like adjusting hue or saturation or effects, um, utilities like range or clamp. So it's super powerful and you can do things with filters and, and utilities that you can't in the shader tree, but there's no reason these can't be available on the shader tree as well. So I'm just gonna do, I'm gonna do a texture and this texture is gonna go into layer one and the texture is going to be my image. That's the input and there is my panda, finally. Layer two, I'm going to do another texture and this particular texture is going to be this plastic thing I have over here, right? And so let's unhook that and drag my plastic over like this and plug it into the input. And there we go. And now you'll see on this node, we have some things like opacity and blend mode, like we're used to 0.5 opacity, blend mode to add. Okay, you know, we could do blend mode to multiply. Again, there's a, a billion blend modes as well. Do we need all of those? <laughs> Maybe. It's a little intimidating if you're gonna ask me what all these do, I don't know. Um, but here we've just got uh, mixed normal, so we're just adding it. We'll just go back to opacity of one. And that's how we're doing layers here. And I can also use an image to blend between them by mapping it to the opacity channel here. So again, I've got my little, uh, is this my little black and white image here? Yes, it is. So we're gonna take this texture here, my grayscale image here, and I'm gonna plug it into opacity. And it's gonna use that as the output channel, right? I can go over here to my transforms and do things like, you know, do 50% or, you know, 200% or offset it in rotation, whoops, like, you know, whatever, whoops, not like that, but like translate it. Um, this is on U and V like that, you know. So again, it's not super, it's a lot of clicking. And, and I suggest you watch the composite um, texture tutorial on Pixel Fondue and download the scene. I have an entire scene that goes with it. Load that into Moto. Look at the look at the graph and familiarize yourself. If you do a lot of layered materials, a lot of layered images, you're going to want to use the composite texture and you're just going to want to have to wrap your head around it. Okay? You'd like to see a search field? Yes. Cindy. 100%. How are you doing, Cindy? Cindy, you're in Australia, right? God knows what time it is. I think you are. Um... But yeah, it is long. It's super long. Um, again, gonna get these in the shader tree. Long-term goal, let's get these in the shader tree. So there's there's that. I don't know. We'll, let's do a gradient really quick. And then I think maybe that's, we'll, we'll, we'll call it a day. But um, So I'm just going to move all these over. And we're going to use gradients. Gradients are super useful in Moto. The Moto gradient texture with all the different inputs like incidence angle and slope is not something that works in Octane. Octane has its own things. So for realistic skin, which material is better? So skin, I tend to use a layered material, similar to that thing I showed earlier with the subsurface scattering layer at the bottom and then layer up, um, or you can mix it with a glossy material and layer up um, speculars on top of it. That's that's what I think for skin. Although you may wanna check out the um, this material here, the standard surface material, that's the one for um, uh, Arnold, that they're trying to make more of a universal material. I think that's where it's going to be for, for skin. And uh, for hair, definitely do the um, look at the uh, uh, look at the uh, Pixel Fondue tutorial for um, the hair tutorial, which is uh, really the hair material is really cool. It just it's like a melanin amount, which is really neat. Let's do gradients really quick. So a gradient in Pixel Fondue, uh, gradient in Octane is like this you go to new texture, you drag down to um, 
gradient two, not gradient, gradient two is what you want, and that's gonna be your sort of standard looking moto gradient. But now we need an input. Now in moto, the input is just a drop down list. Slope, incidence angle, distance from locator. Super awesome, super awesome, moto is super awesome. Octane, it's just not built like that. We need to plug in a node. So I need to go over here again, new texture, and I need to find a node. And so under geometric, you'll see I've got dirt texture, fall off map, curvature texture, lots of these things, positions. These can be inputs to the gradient. So if I want the dirt texture to be input to the gradient, I click that, and now that's in here. Let's go ahead and take a look at, use the solo node to look at the, our dirt texture here. I just worry, let me, let me change the resolution to sort of opposite of what I have. Something like this where I can zoom in little more like that. So let's go back to the schematic and let's solo um, our dirt texture here. And you can see it's sort of an ambient occlusion look, right? So we can say, um, up the strength a little bit. So you see that dark and, and light, it's kind of like that. That's our dirt texture. And that's gonna be part of the input to the gradient now. So I go to my gradient I edit the gradient, I middle click for a key, I make that sort of red, and this one I make sort of blue, and turn off solo node, <laughs> and there you go, right? So that's that's an input to the gradient using a dirt texture. I can also unplug the dirt texture, and I can use the fall off map, and that works like incidence angle. So new texture, let's use the um, fall off map, and this is gonna work like incidence angle. So I've got uh, some colors on here already. And you'll notice that it's just like really pushed to the edge, the fall off map by default. It doesn't use a gradient like uh, Moto does to like really control the fall off. It just uses um, integers here. So I turn that to like two and sort of creep it in or drag it in or drag it towards the edge. Fall off would be kind of like incidence angle, right? So if I change my angle here, you see that's changing as I change my camera angle. And so that, that's how gradients work. And you can also use like um, any sort of procedural texture. So I can unplug this, I can select the input, I can go new texture, I can say procedural, let's do like, I don't know, let's do, um, how about raindrops? Do raindrops, this may not work super great, but <laughs> raindrops may not actually be the best one. Let's do, a different procedural, so new texture. Let's go back to our um, Cinema 4D noises. And we can, you know, solo this to get a uh, look at our noise here. Let's go to like um, this one and then maybe adjust the transform a bit and then unsolo that. And you can see that is now feeding into our gradient. So I can go in here and maybe add a new one here and go green and sort of drag this this way or these this way or whatever. You can kind of see what I'm doing here. So I change the, um, change the uh, you know, noise. It's, it's just feeding into that gradient. So uh, hopefully, does that, does that make sense with the gradients? I hope so. You got that? Okay. Um, yeah. So let's look at uh, let's go look at my little list here. That may be enough of these vertex maps. Let's just do um, you know no I think I'll I'll save those. This is getting kind of long here, like almost an hour and forty minutes. So I think these are better left to other tutorials. So what I want to talk about here, real quick before I go, is just um, octane content. So I think. On the Discord, let's have a chat about the sort of content we ha want to do with Octane. Um, definitely a render network video. Um, maybe we do a uh, video on volumes because we can do we can import like uh, a VDB volumes like flames and clouds. Octane will render those and really fast and denoise them and everything. So maybe a, a video on volumes. And I was thinking maybe we do. Uh, I really do think we need to have a community-led shader tree um, project 
maybe it's just a a spreadsheet maybe it's some sort of one of those project things you you know utilities we do we need to give foundry direction on how to integrate the octane with the shader tree what's important to us do we want to use octane or moto gradients with moto gradient inputs instead of having to do this do we want to use um, moto procedurals do we want to use all the different masking abilities in moto what's important to us right so um, do we want to be able to get to all the octane procedurals as layers in the shader tree so we need to like some define some priorities i think so the, you know foundry understands what we as artists want in terms of octane being integrated in the shader tree because i don't think it's going to all happen at once it'll probably be incremental um, we can also talk about, you know, Octane has just did a, did a talk uh, at GDC, the NVIDIA conference, uh, GTC, not the Game Developers Conference. And, you know, they, they really look ahead a number of years on all their projects. He talks a little bit about Jules, the, the CEO, talks a little bit about the new version of Octane coming out. There'll be all kinds of cool stuff like Nanite for Octane and um, denoised um, lighting passes and, and some, some cool stuff like that. But also integrating um, Octane with, with generative rendering. So basically AI rendering mixed with path tracing. And so that kind of thing, which seems to be where this is going, is something maybe we, we kind of talk about. So people can kind of wrap their heads around it, pre prepare themselves for it. Because I think if you want to be in this industry 10 years from now, you're going to have to do that. And I was also thinking of maybe um, a lighting and photo contest. I don't think that community projects necessarily um, are, are always the best idea because people can devote a lot of time to them. But if we just give a scene, like a scene of a bar or something like that, and you're in charge of just the lighting and you submit your you know camera framing and lighting, lighting you know rendered image of this scene, and we get a bunch, a bunch of different lighting setups and, and different camera shots of the same scene, uh, maybe we pick like the best one and maybe we can get like uh, Otoy has reached out and, and, and I think maybe they'd be willing to give a bit of a render prize, maybe some render credits on the render network or something like that. I think that might be a good idea. And um, like I said, maybe maybe like a little round table feature of Octane with like William and Matt Mearsbergen or something like that. And do, do the, do the, use Octane for, for production and, and do a little, little talk like that as well. So I think that's it. I'm sorry this is... Um, this went super long, but I don't know how you do like an inch. I don't know how you do it in an hour. <laughs> it's like, it's a college class. It's an hour and a half. I hope this like, you know, this is worthwhile. If you're just getting started with Octane Prime and Moto, I hope six or eight months from now when new people are maybe using Octane for Moto, they look at this video and this helps them out. The, the best thing you can do is get on the Discord. And you're, if you get on the Discord, you're going to, um, you're going to be able to download all these scenes. And being able to pick apart a scene is often way better than, um, you know, looking at, at a tutorial, right? So all these uh, Octane contents, you have Moto content as well, but all this Octane content here, you know, here's a scene with 19 different you know, materials on them, right? Here's a scene with motion blur. So this, this is the stuff. Here's a scene of BDBs that, you know, Sylvain put up, like, which is great. So again, if you've got a scene in Octane, they think it'd be useful to other people put it up here in the Discord, okay, right? Maybe you have like volumetric lights or something with water or something with um, render booleans. Put it up here so people can look at it. And yeah, I think that's it. I hope you guys like this. I know it was long and uh, spend more time in Octane next to KS. What's KS? I don't know. Roger Borelli, I haven't seen that name for a while. Okay, uh, yeah, no problem, Roger, Dario. No problem. Neo, thanks for coming. Cindy, nice to see you. No plastic. Oh, is that No Plastic, the the YouTube channel? No plastic? There's a, there's a really good Octane YouTube channel with, with something plastic. That may not be it. Um, Keyshot. Keyshot is a good renderer. There's a bunch of Keyshot quick tips that William did that maybe we'll put on Pixel Fondue. I'd like, I'd, I'd kind of like to include Incorporate the Keyshot community a little bit into Moto because they're primarily CAD people. Uh, but we need a we need a free Moto step importer for all the plasticity people out there and all the CAD people, so they can get in and start using Moto and Octane or or whatever we're doing animations in Moto and sending it to 
um, key shot, that kind of thing. But so if you're a coder and you can code a step importer, <laughs> let me know and we'll get you on the coding channel and uh, see if we can get that going. I think that's super important. Okay. All right, guys, I'm out of here.